So here I have the final instrument all put together, the matrix tritinium or continuum controlled mixture tritonium uh, based on the dope for subharmonic generator and tritonium formant filter uh, with all the other complement of Eurorec modules that are required to emulate the mixture tritonium the master oscillator which feeds the square wave to the subharmonic generator to control that. Uh, also there are other outputs, waveform outputs from the master oscillator that I channel through different uh, modules to have side oscillators. There's a separate side oscillator here that I'm using that is actually uh, a utility module and one of the functions it has this expert sleepers disting module is a waveform VCO setting, which is what I have this uh, set to right now, so I can output either a triangle or a sawtooth or a square wave uh, that's going to be wave folded if I send the input back to itself. Um, the next thing we have is the noise source. Here I use a dope for A118 noise uh, generator. It has colored noise uh, uh, that I can set. I'll also set that through a separate filter so I have more filtering options on noise before it's all passed through the tritonium formant filter. So we have our noise component. We have our master oscillator, side oscillator, the subharmonic generator, tritonium formant filter. We also have a module here that's an envelope generator and a low frequency oscillator. Uh, two other components that Oscar Sala r had in his instrument. I have a second low frequency oscillator LFO here so that I can have different LFOs going at different rates to modulate different things if I need to. Right. Uh, we have a dual frequency shifter here that I send a couple of the outputs of the wave uh, form uh, generated to that I can do different things with. All this mixed together uh, with a, through a voltage controlled amplifier mixer that then sends the mixed uh, set of signals to the formant filter which then sends it to this ZDSP, basically a reverb unit running the Valhalla reverb uh, cartridge. In addition, I have a couple other things going on here. I have a wave folder, a separate wave folder module that I send and output to so that I can get some kind of stringy light sounds uh, from. I also have a uh, a stereo freeze module, a little sampling module that allows me to create um, complex harmonic structures um, that's set on another oscillator to give me a greater variety of sounds. There's a whole section of stuff down here that's used for mixing that I have wires covering. I don't need to get to it, uh, fortunately. Um, I do have a MIDI interface here in case I want to hook up a keyboard and play with that. Um, of course, I'm not going to be able to create uh, the nice portamento that I can on the uh, continuum. Uh, but certain times, maybe you want to play this with a keyboard. Um, uh, there's a foot controller on here that allows me to feed my two foot inputs to the subharmonic generator that allow me to change things. Allow me to change those mixtures on the fly. You know. The subharmonic gener generator can put out four harmonic tones uh, in the subharmonic series, which is basically the overtone series in reverse, or undertones if you want to use that term. And each set of these four together is called a mixture, and I can store those mixtures, and through my foot pedal, I can instantly change them when I'm playing. The formant filter allows me to set four different filters um, either in bandpass, low pass, or I can set this to basically cancel out the filtering entirely. So I have a very flexible filtering mechanism. If I want, I can actually take the outputs of each one of the uh, subharmonic generators and feed those into separate filters or, or mix them myself. But what I've done here is I'm mixing them with the uh, 
single mix output and you can control the mix through the uh, attenuation levels of each of those uh, generators there. Uh, you can see in the middle I have a data um, scope by Mordax, maybe the most essential thing in the whole setup because it allows me to see what I'm doing and most importantly allows me to tune the thing uh, which uh, must be done every time you turn, the th turn on your system because the uh, the analog oscillators might not be exactly in tune. So that pretty much covers it. You can see that I've cordoned off areas on this thing with these little semi-Velcro strips so that I can get my hands into everything that I need to. Right? And just to review a few of the sounds that I can get out of here. Um, Now that's just playing on the continuum's fingerboard. But that's about the most staccato I can get at this setting, which as you can hear, there's a lot of reverb going on here and in some of the performances by Oscar Sala, there's a heck of a lot of reverb uh, being put on that instrument um, because of the general nature of the sawtooth waves that, that are coming out. Um, uh, they sound better with a lot of that, that reverb on it. Um, what I can do is I, I have these two wonderful sequential switch modules by WMD that takes inputs and routes them to any of any combination of four outputs. And so what I've done here is I've taken all of the envelope and the LFO sections and I've connected them to one switch and all the low frequency oscillators I've connected to another switch so I can instantly cut any of these things in and out. And that allows me to, when I'm playing, be very dynamic in how things are going on. So let's just sample some of the things that I can do here. For one, let's cut in the envelope generator. That's about it. as quick as I can get with my finger on this setting. What I can do is I'll cut in the envelope generator, take out the continuum fingerboard. Uh, I'm still using the continuum to trigger, but now the triggering is not through the, the Z function, Z pressure function. It's through the envelope generator itself. And listen to how quickly I can get things to trigger now. Okay, so uh, it's, it's really important to have this envelope generator for some of the sounds that Sala created in his performances. What I can do then is I can put that back on uh, the continuum uh, pressure uh, envelope. And let's say I want to bring in my side oscillator now. I'll take out the uh, subharmonic generator, and now I've got side oscillators coming in. What I've done here is I've taken some of the outputs from the Pittsburgh Modular Waveforms uh, VCO and I've sent them to various different places. This one is going through this stereo freeze module which basically samples the sound and then allows you to play around with things. It creates a, a very uh, nice harmonic structure. that I can do things with. Uh, that's one thing. I can kick that out. Let me bring up the this second one. I've sent the blade output, it's a kind of a sawtooth-like uh, waveform, to a separate wave folder module that I then mix in. I can get some of those stringy kind of sounds that the Tritonium can create this way, and I can change my wave folder settings pretty easily here. So 
So there I have my wave folder, right? I can take that out, and now as a side oscillator, I'll bring in my true side oscillator, which is this expert sleep resisting module that's set to a VCO uh, wave shaping mode. And what I can then do there, let's bring that up a bit. There's a triangle wave. as a side oscillator. I can, using this module, send the triangle wave back in on itself as the modulator to its wave shaping and create a more sawtooth-like sound. It's more like a kind of a tritonium sound that we've heard. Uh, now what I can do, if I want, I can take that out. This module allows me to also send a square wave out. So I can bring that up, take out the modulation. There's a square wave sound, and I can send the square wave back on itself now to modulate it. Now, what I can do is I can bring in some noise. High frequency noise. That I can play around with here. And here's some low frequency noise. Now I can route my uh, frequency shifting sounds. I have a sine wave from this uh, VCO sent to the frequency shifter. Let's cut out our uh, expert sleepers module. So there's just my basic sine wave going into the frequency shifter that I can now around with and maybe I'll kick in the envelope a little noise gives me a little nice percussive sounds that's more like the kind of sound that I'm used to hearing from Sala's instrument um, I actually have another uh, frequency shifted sound, a sawtooth wave, that's frequency shifted as well. That first one was on uh, exponential frequency shifting. This one's on linear, which creates much uh, more complex sounds. Let's take out the noise. Bring back the fingerboard. You can see when you have that envelope generator on creates a much different sound. The envelope generator is um, extremely important, even though, yeah, we are the envelope generator with a continuum. In this kind of a setup, you really do need a separate envelope generator to do uh, a lot of what you need to do. So let's play around with that frequency shifted sound. Now what I can do too, if I want, the LFOs are all triggered in here. I can, on frequency number two, I can cut in an LFO on that. Uh, if I use that on an envelope instead. Can do uh, a lot of different things. Let's bring up both of these guys, modulate them both. Maybe modulate one with the sine wave, one with the sawtooth wave. And I can actually modulate the um, reverb as well. Um, so let's 
cut in a few sounds. Let's just cut it all in. Maybe get rid of the noise. Lower that. And let's maybe... You can hear that I'm modulating the total output on the reverb now. And I can actually uh, modulate something even quicker. I can set these LFOs to different rates. You can see them blinking different speeds now. I can modulate all kinds of stuff. That just gives you a brief idea of some of the things that you can do here. Um, I really enjoy what I've created, and now the challenge becomes, what can I do with this thing? Let's write a piece for it and see what comes out. Um, finally, the one thing I should say in relationship to the video I made before, I changed this around to be a monophonic instrument because the continuum just cannot play in the manner that I was trying to get it to play um, with polyphonically, um, though with a monophonic voice on each half of Y. It can be done to some degree, but it's, it, it, it just can't be done to the flexible manner that I really wanted it to. So I'm going to have to th think about uh, using this instrument in a different way than I originally had planned. Though I still, on the bottom half of Y, have my continuum sounds. <laughs> the continuum there. To be honest, if I just program the continuum to do all this, I could get probably a reasonable recreation of everything I've done here uh, with all of this Eurorack paraphernalia. <laughs>